Are you ready to build your Prover XL 4030? Then stick around because that's what we're doing in this episode. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. Now in today's episode we're going to be assembling the Prover XL 4030 from Saint Smart Gen Mitsu. Now I didn't do an unboxing of this machine because to be honest there's not that much to unbox. A lot of the components come pre-assembled and it's one of the biggest selling points of this machine. And I have to be honest it really makes our life much easier when it comes to building it. Now before we get stuck in with that I'm going to quickly mention Threadlock from Loctite. If you're not familiar with this, it's a bit like a glue that holds the bolts in place and keeps everything secure. But it's one of those pieces of advice that you often find out after assembling your machine when it's sometimes a little bit too late. So I would definitely consider using this, specifically the blue one, when you're going through your build. You just put a drop on every thread as you put the machine together. Now you won't use, see me using it on this video purely because if I make a mistake and I have to reshoot any particular scene, it gets a bit messy to keep taking this out with all the thread lock on everything. But do consider using it. So let's take a look at the components and start to build this machine. So the first thing you'll want to do is unbox everything and check you have all the components listed in the instruction manual. Next we want to inspect the base frame itself. Check all of your bolts are tightened, make sure your spring clips are in the correct place seated within the groove. You should be able to move your carriages back and forth with a little bit of pressure. It shouldn't require too much, you may find there are slight flat spots on the rubber wheels and it kind of locks into place. That is normal, they will get better over time. If you can't move your carriage back and forth, you may need to slacken some of the wheels off on the top and bottom, just a little bit to give it a bit more play and allow you movement. The last thing we want to check is that the frame itself is square. You can do this using either combination squares, speed squares, but make sure they are true and accurate. The easiest method is to simply use a tape measure, go from corner to corner diagonally, and you should have the same measurement. If you don't have the same measurement, you will need to square the frame up slightly, slacken some of the bolts off and just readjust it until it is much closer to being square and tighten them back up. Next, we come to the back of the machine. We're going to connect the coupler to the thread rod and then put the mount and stepper motor over that and fix it to the frame securely with four M5 50 mil bolts. Now to connect the coupler, simply slide it over the thread rod. Once it hits the frame, pull it back by about one to two mil. Use the relevant Allen key to pinch up the grub screw that connects it to the thread rod itself. Once that is tight, turn it round until you can see the Allen key, Allen bolt for the clamp, and then tighten that one up as well, just to make sure it is all secure. Now with the mount itself, you can have the opening on the right, top or left. Do not put it on the bottom, it will make it difficult to access this later on. Me personally, I'm going to have it facing the inside of the frame. Also with your stepper motor, I'm going to have the wires on the inside as well, just to keep them all the same and make sure that the flat side of the spindle in the middle is also pointing the same way. To connect all this together, I'm going to slide that over, take one of the M5 50mm nuts, push that through. Then as you take it up to the frame, it should self-center into the coupler and find its way. And then we can take the relevant Allen key and start to tighten the first bolt up. Now you want to take this most of the way, but do not pinch it up too tight. You want to leave just a little play as it will make it easier to get the other three bolts in. So now we'll do that all the way around the stepper motor. Just slide them in. They should go in. And then we can tighten this one all the way. And then come back and do the rest and make sure they are all nice and tight. And that's your first stepper motor secured in place. What we just need to do now is make sure that the coupler on the inside is also connected and nice and tight. We'll turn the bar around until we can see the thread and then tighten that up. Pinch that up and we'll just do the same with the other clamp one as well. We then do exactly the same on the opposite side, 
but I'll speed this one up a little bit. Next we put the spoil board in place. Now the heads of the threaded inserts should be on the underneath or the bottom of the spoil board. Also the way to tell which is the front or the back of the spoil board, the front will have more holes and more of the threaded inserts along it. So we'll put that in place and you roughly need to align it. You should be able to see the pre-drilled holes in the frame through the holes in the spoil board. Next we'll take the M5 20mm bolts and we'll place those in. You get one in place, roughly find the hole and tighten it up. As we've done previously, you don't want to tighten it all the way. Just get it roughly in there and go through and put the bolts in the rest of the holes. I'll speed this section up, you don't want to watch me put them all in. So with all the bolts in place, just do a final run and tighten them back up. I should mention in the instructions, it only says there is six bolts for here, but on my actual spoil board, there are eight holes. And the next step is to put the guards in place, which protect the thread bars. So if you just roughly drop those in. And for this, you will need four of the M5 16 mil bolts. So similar again. We'll tighten these up and just start to pinch it and then do the other end. And once it's all in place, you can tighten both ends up. I'll just do that for the other side now. And there we have most of the base finished. Now before we attach the gantry to the base, we're just going to fit the X stepper motor in the same way that we did both of the Y. So we're going to take the coupler and slide this onto the thread rod. Now this plate is a little bit thicker than the other one, so you need to pull this out just enough until you can get to the set screw in order to tighten it up. So then once you pinch that up, we'll just tighten the other clamp bolt up. Just pinch that up. And now I'll put this together already to save a bit of time. We're going to have the mouth of the mount fades facing towards the back. And make sure that the flat plate on the spindle is also facing the same way. Now the cables should be facing towards the front of the gantry. So we'll position this in place. And just start to get one of the bolts in. These are the M5 55mm bolts and you'll need four of them. And once the first one is almost there, just go around and quickly put the other three all the way in. With the last one tight, we'll just pinch the rest up so they're all tight as well. And then we just need to rotate this round until we can see the little set screw and tighten that up. And then the clamp as well. And that is the gantry assembled. So at this stage, the official instructions suggest fitting the drag chain mount. But after watching a video from Techie DIY, he advises to fit this later after the drag chain has actually been fitted. So we're gonna skip that step for now and we'll come back to it shortly. So the next step is to mount the gantry onto the base. Simply pick it up. You should be able to lower it down onto the plates either side. And that will roughly put it in place. Take a look through the holes, make sure they align with the threaded holes on the plate underneath. You then need the M5 16mm bolts. You will take a spring washer, place that on first, then a normal washer. You can pick it up, place that on, and then put that into the hole. And just to begin with, tighten it up with your fingers. We'll do that with the other three. And as always, just pinch them up at the end. And the same done on the opposite side. 
Now at this stage, I would suggest checking that all the axes move freely. So turn the knobs on every axis to make sure they all move individually. And obviously with the Y, turn them together in the same direction to make sure the gantry moves. So the next step is we're going to lay the drag chain and the wiring loom, and then we're going to fix on the bracket for the X axis limit switches. So this is quite flexible, but can be difficult to manage. So if you just bring it over, lay it in place, loop that round, and then we can start to put the bracket into place. You'll need to fix this with M5 8mm bolts. Be careful not to catch any of the wires as you're putting the bolts in and keep it level. It can be a bit fiddly not to pinch the wires, so do be careful. And then next we're going to fix the drag chain to this bracket using the small 6mm M4 bolts. Coming back to the front of the machine, we can secure the drag chain bracket to these two T-nuts using two more 8mm M5 bolts. So next we're going to lay the drag chain for the Y-axis. To fix it to this plate, we will need two of the M4 8mm bolts. And to fix it to this bracket here, we will need two of the M5 16mm bolts. And I've already loaded them with a spring washer and a normal washer for ease. I've also just clamped the cables up to make it easier when moving all this about, save them just falling down everywhere. So we'll put this in place. Now the key here is to try, not to try to make sure there is no unnecessary twist within the cable. I want to turn this one around. And we'll get these first two bolts in. Then we're going to bring this down and fix that into place. I'm keeping the wiring loom at the back of the motor so it's out of the way for anything in the front. And just make sure that's all secure. So essentially your machine is now built and what we're going to do is go around connecting all the different cables and making sure they're secured in place. Fortunately, Saint Smart have done a really good job of making sure that everything is aligned up and every different type of cable has a certain connector to make sure you don't get them wrong. These two particular wires feel like they could be in a slightly dangerous place, just constantly rubbing on the wheels and possibly falling into the gap there. I may come back later and secure those slightly differently, um, just to make sure they don't get caught in the wheels. If when you're wiring up these connections, you find that the cables come a little bit short, what you need to do is shuffle up the wires within the drag chain, just to give you a bit more slack there. So we'll slide these up and pull them through. And that means we can easily connect this now. And the final connection is just connecting the spindle up. We'll run it through the cable holder on the side, secure that in place. And then obviously negative to negative and positive to positive. Clearly labeled up, slide that on. And there we have it. So I've just repositioned the Z motor cable to come up over the top of this guard. It's actually probably where it should sit because it protects it from everything else underneath. And then this cable clip also holds that off the wheel as well. So everything should be safe when this moves up and down. So I really like the fact they've given you enough cable to have the control box on either side of the machine. They've done a great job of marking everything up so you know where each cable goes and these correspond to the labels on the wiring loom. Even down to the white stepper motors they are marked up as 1 and 2 and accordingly with the labels there is a 1 and a 2. 
Now there are two connectors on the end here for the laser and the Z probe. These pull out quite easily. So do be careful you don't knock them out. You may wanna take them out and put them in a safe place until you're ready to use them. And finally, there is a switch here to control the power setting between 110 and 230. Make sure it is correct for your country. Now let's get all these cables connected and complete the final step. And to finish with, we assemble the clamps. You take the clamp plate, and then one of the bolts will thread through the back hole. You take this through quite a bit. And this allows the clamp to balance up later on. You then take one of the bolts with the wing nuts on, place a washer over it, and then that will go through the slot. That then goes into the threaded inserts within the spoil board. This then allows you to clamp your material down. Slacken that off a little bit. Place that under. And then that can be pinched up. Secure. So you should still have a few items left. More obvious ones such as the memory stick, the USB lead and the power cord will be used in the next episode to connect the machine to the computer. You also have the Z probe and we'll be covering this in a future episode showing you how to connect it and calibrate it with your software. We have a mounting plate and a connector lead for the laser when Science Smart release it. And we also have a 69 mm diameter mount for a router. This would typically be the Dewalt. Now the two connectors that I mentioned earlier also go to these two individual items. The two pin being for the Z probe and the three pin being for the laser. And that's why it's a good idea to keep them safe. So there we have it, the Science Smart Gen Mitsu Prover XL4030 is fully built and ready to go. Obviously in the next episode we'll be connecting that up to a PC and getting everything running. Now my first impressions of the machine are extremely high. It is well built, it is sturdy and I love how easy it was to put together. The fact that a lot of the components come pre-built and everything is labelled up so well makes it such a smooth process to assemble and I'm certainly looking forward to using it in the future. Now that is everything for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. As always please like it, please subscribe to the channel and if you found the content useful do consider donating to the channel via one of the links in the description below. I'll see you all on the next episode.